Several scientists have been trying to understand the structure of antigen. They wanted to know what portion in an antigen is capable of inducing an immune response. So a lot of research was carried out in order to understand the nature of this antigen. So what they discovered is an entire antigen is not capable of inducing an immune response. There are very very specific regions in an antigen which is capable of inducing an immune response. That way if you look at an antigen it has got two portions. So an antigen will have two regions. One region is what we call a hapten. Another region is what we call a carrier. A hapten is that small portion of an antigen which is immunogenic that has the capacity to induce an immune response and it is a small portion it may be a region of let us say that 6 to about 15 amino acid long that's all that is a hapten but haptens are normally associated with a carrier carrier also can be a sequences of amino acid which may not have an immunogenic it may not be able to induce an immune response but this association hapten plus carrier combination is capable of inducing an immune response so this is normally the structure of an antigen now understand that this hapten uh, this region that we are talking about the 16 in the 6 to 15 amino acid region they are normally in the way by which an antigen express its foreignness. So therefore, this portion will be projected. If this is an antigen, these particular regions will be projected outward. So, um, these particular sequences of amino acid, a few sequences will be projected outward. This is the region which is showing in the foreignness of a particular antigen. And these regions which are immunogenic is what we call antigenic determinants. Antigenic determinants are also known as commonly the short form which we use is AD that is antigenic determinants and they are also known as epitopes. So another new terminology epitopes are the nothing but the antigenic determinants of an antigen. When we look at the antigenic determinants there are many characteristics of antigenic determinants. One of the characteristics of an antigenic determinants is um, first of all it is a short sequence it is a short set of sequences. We have seen that it is only about 5 to 15 amino acid length, 6 to 15 amino acid length. That becomes an antigenic determinant. In the second characteristics of an antigenic determinant is they can be uh, continuous or discontinuous. Continuous or discontinuous. What is the meaning of a continuous uh, antigenic determinant. So a continuous deter uh, antigenic determinant means when you make a uh, when you make a primary sequence, primary structure of a protein, these antigenic determinants can be in a continuous form, and each one this is one antigenic determinant, antigenic determinant number one, antigenic determinant number two, they can be continuously arranged, and each one is capable of inducing an immune response. That is the meaning of continuous antigenic determinant. Let us look at the structure of myoglobin. A myoglobin, I have drawn the structure here, it is a, a single polypeptide chain with 153 amino acid. And in this myoglobin, which can act as an antigen, there are very specific regions in the myoglobin structure that will act as antigenic determinants. Some of the regions are highlighted here that is amino acid number 15 to 21 becomes antigenic determinant. Uh, 56 to 62 becomes another antigenic determinant. 94 to 100 becomes another antigenic determinant. 
111 to 120 becomes another antigenic determinant and the last antigenic determinant is 146 to 153 amino acid. So how many antigenic determinants? 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 antigenic determinants have been identified in the myoglobin structure, a single polypeptide chain. And they are all linear. So this is the meaning of continuous antigenic determinant. What is the meaning of discontinuous antigenic determinant? So a discontinuous antigenic determinant is a classic example is the hen egg white lysosine. So this is a, again a single polypeptide with 129 amino acid. Now this also has antigenic determinants. If you like, take the primary structure, you will see that the antigenic determinants like, uh, uh, first of all, the determinants like the, uh, in the first to 12, it forms an antigenic determinant. And another antigenic determinant is 122 uh, to 129. That becomes another antigenic determinant. So we have shown two antigenic determinants. But what happens is, it becomes a very efficient antigenic determinant only when it is folded. Which means, I'm drawing a fictitious figure here. So assume that these are the, one is the N terminus and this is a C terminus. And this is one of the antigenic determinant and this is the second antigenic determinant. When they come closer, then only both combine together and forms an effective antigenic determinant. Therefore, we say that this is an example of a discontinuous antigenic determinant. So we are seeing that antigenic determinants are first of all, they are small. Then we have seen continuous and discontinuous antigenic determinant. That is another property. And the third property of antigen or characteristics of antigenic determinant is, if you look at this, in the, uh, in the myoglobin, we have seen there are five antigenic determinants and it also has these regions, these blue regions, these are the immunosilent region, immunosilent region. That is another characteristic. So antigenic determinants are separated by immunosilent region and also understand that there are certain antigenic determinants are highly potent. Certain antigenic determinants are highly potent. So we call that, we say that they are immunodominant. Certain antigenic determinants are immunodominant. For example, in the case of lysosine, lysosine, uh, it has a very immunodominant uh, antigenic determinant that is sequence number 60 to 83. It forms an antigenic determinant and that, because that is an immunodominant uh, antigenic determinant which means this antigenic determinant is more powerful, more capable of inducing an immune response than other uh, antigenic determinants. So these are some of the characteristics of antigenic determinants.